Hey guys, and time for another quick tip tutorial. This time it's been quite a while since I've done one, but we're gonna do quite a cover quite a few things in here. And yeah, we've got screaming guts and just a work in progress. But what we want to do is look at retopology. Okay, we're gonna look at decimation and retopology. Uh, just a few concepts we're gonna cover there and how to sort of go about doing that. First, I want to make sure this is one polygroup by control W. Okay, I'm gonna go into solo mode. And we're gonna do a few things to this model. So let's just start off with BPA to get the paintbrush out, okay? And we just want to paint some guides here. We're going to go hold down spacebar and go to black. First, let's go to white because we want to fill this with white before we can paint anything. So we go to color and then we go to full object. Okay, that'll just fill it with white or any color you choose, but we want white. Okay, and I have a shortcut, but I'm going to go down to black and now we're still on the paintbrush. We're going to make sure symmetry is on and or off depending on how you want to do it, but we'll keep it on. And we're just going to draw these guides. So basically where we want the um, different areas of polygroups to be. That's just all I'm doing. So I'm just saying in this area will be a different polygroup. So over here by the muzzle of the mouth, we're going to have a different polygroup and maybe one here by the forehead. This is just for demonstration purposes. I'll probably put one by the eyelid as well. I would also consult a map just so you can see where to put that. But again, just for demonstration purposes. Next, we're going to go down here to Z plug and we're going to go to polygroup it and then polygroup it from paint. Okay. So this is going to look at the paint and then it's going to sort of polygroup everything in between. It's going to take a bit of a second there, uh, not too long. And we're just looking at my points here, it's about 400,000. And you can see here, we now have different polygroups, okay, uh, just from that. Now, one thing we don't want are these jagged edges here. There are a few ways to sort this out, okay. That there's paint, that's not a mask that I'm using, it's the black paint. Okay, so a few ways. We can go down here to deformation, okay. So right here, which is below surface, okay, so deformation, we can go over to polish by groups with an open circle, okay, and if we do that, we drag it a few times, you can see that that helps out, but unfortunately, what it does is it also messes with the topology, right, so it smooths everything out, and we don't want that, of course, so let's go over to masking, which is right under that, and then we can go to mask by color, and then mask by poly paint. And then we can click and drag the square and then pick the white. Remember, we painted it white and we've got black. So now it just leaves the, the black unmasked. And that's what we want. Okay, so we just want to work on this area, right? So we don't mess up any of the other areas. So we can go back there, uh, switch our groups on. By the way, if you click on this little button just above the polyframe, you can switch off your, your mesh, okay, um, the, the lines. If you want that, you can do that. And yeah, it's on the button itself, ZBrush, and it's UI is on another level. <laughs> but yeah, so we've got the mask. We can go back to Polish by Groups, and you can see here, it just deals with the areas that have been, or that are unmasked, right? So we don't have to worry about that. And so that's one way to do it. And I'm just going to switch off my polypaint, go to white, and you can see it does leave a little bit of artifacting here, unfortunately, but we will sort that out in a second. I just want to show you a few more ways that we can go about doing this. So I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to come back up here. Um, I want to press comma to get out our toolbox. Okay, we want to go to brush. And next we want to go over to smooth. Okay, because we want to use the smooth brush. So just a quick uh, pointer here, you can use smooth stronger when you're sort of trying to smooth something and you really want uh, more of smoothing, but we want to go to smooth groups. Okay, so you can use smooth stronger when you're having a little problem with that, but we want to use smooth groups and we're just going to use the normal smooth brush or rather shift. And this will use the smooth groups, okay? And this will smooth according to your groups, your poly groups. So this works just like that um, polish by deformation or other polish by groups, but here you're sort of manually doing it, okay? So again, it's the same thing, but here you're just manually, manually doing it and you might wanna use this for certain areas, okay? And again, it still leaves that artifacting, right? Because it's kind of doing the same operation. And like I said, we'll sort that out in a second. Another thing you might want to do is so maybe you sort of uh, mask off an area and you want to create another polygroup from that. You just press Control W and unfortunately you have a little bit of these, those jagged edges. So I just switched my um, lines back on there. Okay, and so what you can do is go down here to Geometry, go down to Edge Loop and then Edge Loop by Masked Border. And if you click on that, you'll notice that if I zoom in here, it gives us a nice clean cut instead. So if I press Control W, it's very jagged. But if I press Control Shift E, which is the shortcut for this, you can, uh, you'll get very sort of clean topology, okay? And that's what we want. So there's another way to go about doing that. So instead of doing all of that and then going to masking and retopologizing and all that stuff, you can just do that and then control shift E and it'll give you a nice clean cut there. Okay, so quite a few ways to do that. I'm just gonna fill it again with white. Like I said, I've got a shortcut for full object, which is under color and then full object. So right now we wanna sort out this artifacting, right? We've, I've shown you a few ways on how to sort of straighten your topology there. We're gonna go back on our history, okay? So back to where we have 
just like this, okay, where we have all just one poly group and we've got the right topology, we don't have any artifacting. And I'm gonna control click on that. You'll see there's a white bar that comes up there. That's saying I'm gonna remember this point in history, okay? And just a little bit of a quick side note here. When you have that, you'll notice that you have a red bar on the top left when you move to other subtools. That red bar means that you have a point in history that's being remembered. So ZBrush is just telling you to remember that you have that, okay? Just in case you're taking up too much memory and you're wondering what's doing that. So it's just kind of pointing that out to you. So back to what we were doing, we can go to project and then project history. This is projecting the history that we just remembered with the control clicking. So I'm gonna go a distance of 0 0.005. We're gonna go back to that history just to see, yep, that's what we want. Go back here and you can see if we just click on project history, not project all, project history. Okay, it'll project from our previous history onto this. Okay, so that's all it's doing. It's remembering what we clicked on. Remember we press, we held on control and we clicked on that and you remember that point and now it's just projecting that onto this. Okay, and that obviously helps out. Now we wanna go and retopologize this. Okay, so that, that was all to set up for retopologizing or the remesher rather that they will help us out um, because we want the smooth edges because when you remesh, it remembers those jagged edges and it kind of remeshes with that, which is what you don't want. So I'm gonna go to target polygon count of maybe 10 for 10,000. I wanna keep groups. Okay, we, we definitely wanna keep groups. That was the whole point. And we also have adaptive size. So adaptive size basically means that the lower it is, the less it's gonna try and adapt, okay, or, or add more loops. The higher it is, the more it's gonna sort of add loops and uh, we'll, I'll show you that in a second what it does. So pretty good here. Unfortunately, we have a little bit of a, a wonky polygon there, but what I'll do is I'll just, I'll remesh it again and that should sort that out. Okay, there it is. So that usually happens when you've got those jagged edges, okay? And that's pretty much sorted out. And of course we've got active points. Now it's only 17,000 and we've got good geometry, which is kind of what we want. So again, let me go to the adaptive size all the way up and we hit that Z remesher just to show you what that does. You can see it gives you more polygons in areas. Um, so if I zoom here into the mouth, you can see that there's far more polygons right here. I don't really want that. Maybe you do, but I don't. So I usually leave it at around nine to 10 for the adaptive size or nine to 12 rather for the adaptive size. Okay, so we're just gonna go back to where we were and I'm gonna project history once again. So it's just gonna project what we had onto that, okay? And you only have to click that once, right? You don't have to go back. And I'm gonna press Control D, so we have subdivisions, project history again. Okay, so we're getting back our detail at a higher subdivision level, Control D again. Okay, project history, and they'll take, so the long, the bigger your, your uh, mesh, the more, it'll, more time it'll take to project history, that's just how it works. But as you can see, this is pretty good, right? We've got our good topology, we've got polygroups, we've got clean cut lines, we've got everything we want. The eyelid's a little bit weird, but like I said, you should definitely do that in the beginning where you sort of uh, paint those borders in. You definitely want those for eyelids. But again, this was just for demonstration. But yeah, you now have sort of clean sculpting geometry. Okay, and while we're on the retopology, we've got the spawn here. Uh, you can check out my speed sculpt of that in my YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Uh, but what we're doing here is I just wanna show you that sometimes you want areas uh, to have more topology and sometimes you want areas to have less topology on the same model. So can you do that? And yes, of course you can. ZBrush allows for that. So I'm just gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I just wanna fill this object with white as well. We're gonna go down here to use polypaint under Z remesh and color density of two. So we're basically saying this area should be double the normal density. So I'm just gonna mask that off, invert the mask, and then say full object, okay, which is under color for object. So we're basically saying all this pink area, again, it's just color coding it. We're not painting it pink. It's just there for, just to give it a little bit of a color code basically. So we're gonna go from color density of two to 0 0.65 maybe. And this is saying now we want less than one, right? So whatever one is, we want it to be less than one. And if we fill that, that'll be a blue, okay? Again, this is just for color coding. We're not actually painting it these colors. And I'm just gonna use my brush BPA, okay, my paintbrush, just to paint the turquoise on here as well, just so we know that these areas are less density. And of course you can have a density of one, which is just white, I believe. Okay, and it'll just sort of leave those areas. Okay, so now we have those areas color-coded and prepped. 
we can go over here to keep groups and Z remesh. If we remesh this, we'll now get this. And you can have a look at this. You can actually see that the area on the face, which is usually what you want, it has more polygons. And on the back of the head, we have less polygons, right? You can clearly see that there's more polygons. And there are no triangles, right? Z remesh doesn't really do triangles. So what we can do as well, for a quicker way, you can mask an area, okay, invert that mask, and the area that's masked won't be subdivided. So we can press Control D, and here we have the area that is not subdivided because we masked it off, and you have the area above it which is subdivided. The only problem is with this method is that you get triangles, so I wouldn't really use that method. So here you can see I've been re uh, remeshing this and then trying to project the history and you do have problems like this okay where when the mesh is pretty complicated like my spawn mesh there's quite a lot going on there so what I do is I go back and forth and I just use the just a few brushes so maybe the clay build up and the standard brush just to bring it back up and try and help the project history so the project history is trying to sort of grab areas and if it can't grab areas it tries it just tries to grab whatever is closest to it so yeah, it's grabbing the eye instead of the eyelid and they're obviously very close to one another so to try and combat that, so maybe you don't mind um, triangles in your topology, what we can use instead is the Z plugin and then Decimation Master. I'm just going to hit that pre-process current. So that's going to take a while. We're going to go back to Z plugin and then Decimation Master. Okay. We just want to pre-process that. Okay, that's going to take some time. And after it's pre-processed, we can go down here and we can set how much of decimation we want on this. So decimation really helps with that. It tries to keep the topology and then it lessens the polygon count. And I'm just going to hit decimate current, not decimate all, because that will decimate all your mesh uh, that you have on your file, which is not a good idea. Okay, as you can see, I have the white bar there, which means I control clicked on it to remember the history. And if I shift F here, you can see we've got, you know, um, some pretty good topology and it, rem well, not good topology, but it remembers, uh, you know, the shapes. And I can go back to project history to get our color back. And that's, that's pretty good, right? So... Uh, let's just say we want to keep the detail on this sort of white area right of his face and we don't really mind the rest of the area So the eyes the teeth and the black part of his face. We can definitely go down here to masking and We can mask this out. Okay, so we can go to mask by polypaint. We can click and drag this on the white and Then we can just bring down or bring up the tolerance rather I brought it a little too high. I think I would probably brought it down a little bit maybe to 40 or 50 So now what I'm doing is I'm just manually uh, masking it off Okay, again, you'd probably want to do a better job than I'm doing here, but again, just for demonstration purposes, we unfortunately have to go back and then pre-process current because we we're doing it with masks, okay? And then we can go back and then decimate this down even further to maybe 30%, 35%, and this will now decimate everything around the mask, okay, and leave everything within the mask as is, okay? So if we if I zoom in here, you can see where the white area is over here. It's quite decimated, or it sort of kept the topology there, but around it especially with the eye and the neck it's quite decimated right so it's really trying to sort of you know move between back and forth there and if i go back to project history uh you know it projects everything back on and you can you can barely tell the difference now right so this is another way to sort of combat that so if you want to sort of bring down the polygons i think it was 4.6 million and now it's 800,000, and you can barely tell the difference i'm just moving back and forth between the two here you can see a little bit of crispness, crispness on the uh, first one and then compared to here. It's a little bit blurred, but honestly, from this distance, you're not going to tell the difference. And that's another way to do it. So decimation is pretty useful. All that pre-processing and whatever is actually kind of annoying. So in case you're wondering, can I maybe do that on the fly? And yes, you can. So we'll see here. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm going to show you how to sort of decimate on the fly. And I'm using this model again with guts because it's a smaller model. The spawn model is a little too big. So what I'm going to do is press W to get out our gizmo. Okay, I'm going to make sure symmetry is off and then go to remesh by decimation. Um, this box is a little bit weird, so I'm just going to reset this. So Alt, click on that arrow. We're going to go back to our remesh by decimation. Okay, we've got quite a few arrows here. The color arrows are basically for uh, symmetry. The yellow arrow is for your borders for your UVs. The purple arrow is to keep your UVs. This arrow here is for uh, your polypaint data. We don't have any polypaint, so we don't have to worry about that. But the most important arrow is this white arrow. And I'm just going to go into solo mode. Is the white arrow, and that will remesh for us. So we can see we've got about 400,000 points here. If I bring this up, it'll pre-process. Okay, it has to pre-process. It'll only do it once, okay. And then we'll see it is now dynameshed. Okay, sorry, decimated, not dynameshed. 
get decimated quite a bit, but honestly, that's not too bad. Like if you're using this character in like a background or something, no one's really gonna notice that. And you can do this on the fly. So you can see me clicking and dragging and it doesn't need to pre-process. It's already done it once. And you can just do this on the fly. So if you just wanna quickly decimate something, especially if it's not that many polygons and if you're using it in the background of something and you know, it's not that important, but you just wanna keep the shape of it, this is definitely a really good way to go about doing that. And you can just apply some smoothing to this in Blender or in Maya or whatever and no one's gonna be, no one's gonna tell the difference, right? If it's a main character, obviously you wouldn't do this, but you can just go back there to the gizmo tool and press accept, and now you, there you have it, okay? And yeah, that was quite a lot of information, quite a lot of stuff to go through, but you can see it's quite important to know your topology, know decimation and how to use it and how to sort of utilize it in your sculpt so that you have less topology to work with, especially when you're importing and exporting things. It can get quite heavy and decimation will definitely help with that. And so will the Z remesher, that will definitely help as well. So I hope this has been of some help, guys. I know it's been a while since I've released one of these videos. I've been releasing more of my speed sculpts lately, and that's not doing too well with you guys. <laughs> but that's okay, I like to do them anyway. So I will see you guys in the next one, and be sure to leave a like, comment, uh, dislike if you didn't like it, subscribe. I will definitely appreciate that. And thanks, guys. Thanks for the support. I will see you in the next one, hopefully not too far away.